Now we're going to explore the cost function of a linear regression model with one variable. Remember the training set that we saw in the previous video. Here we learned that the hypothesis for linear regression with one variable looks like this. With theta 0 and theta 1, the parameters of the hypothesis and x being the input variable. What we haven't seen yet is how we can choose these parameters. What should the value of these parameters be? Or in other words what line will fit best through our data? That's what we will see in this video. First let's recap what will happen to our hypothesis if we change the parameters theta 0 and theta 1. Let's look at these three examples. In the first example we set theta 0 equal to 0 and theta 1 equal to 1. This will result in the following hypothesis. In the second example we make theta 0 equal to 1 and theta 1 equal to 0.5. And lastly we show an example where theta 0 is equal to 1 and theta 1 is equal to 0. So now to come back to our question. How can we choose values for theta 0 and theta 1 to get the best fitting line through our dataset? Well, the idea is to choose the values for the parameters so that our hypothesis is close to the real value, y, of the training examples. In many cases, there is still an error between the predicted value and the real value. So the goal is to minimize the error between the hypothesis and the real value of the training examples as this will guide us to good values for theta 0 and theta 1. We will express this minimalization problem with a formula. We want to minimize the total error of all training examples. This is done by taking the sum of every error between the value of the hypothesis and the real value of y. We want to sum over the entire training set, so we sum from 1 up to m, which is the total amount of training examples. Note that we only want positive errors so that we can sum them up. For this reason we will square the error. Further we also add a term 1 over m to take the average error. And we add a term 1 over 2, which is just a constant to make the upcoming math a little bit easier. This term that we just wrote down is also called the cost function for linear regression with one variable and is denoted as j. This specific cost function is also called the squared error function and even though there are different cost functions we can use for these linear regression problems, the squared error function is the most used. So to recap our goal. Our goal is to find the best values for theta 0 and theta 1 by minimizing the cost function which is dependent on theta 0 and theta 1. To illustrate what this cost function means, we will look to an example where we simplify the hypothesis by setting theta 0 equal to 0. In this case we will try to find the best value for theta 1 and our hypothesis will be simplified to theta 1 times x. If we look at these data points on the graph, we see we get the following training set, with three training samples. The first training sample will be data point that has x equal to 1 and y equal to 1. The second data point contains x equal to 2 and y equal to 2 and the third and last training sample is 3, 3. Remember that we use the notation superscript 1 to denote the first training sample. Superscript 2 to denote the second training example and so on. Now to see what it means to minimize the cost function, we will look to three different values for theta 1. For the first one, we assume that theta 1 is equal to 1. Then we get a hypothesis that looks like this. Next, we can calculate the cost function. As there are three training examples in our training set, m is equal to 3, so we can plug 3 into the equation. Next, we can calculate the three errors between our hypothesis and the y value of our training examples. The first training example has x equal to 1 and y equal to 1. If we plug this x value in our hypothesis we get an estimated value of 1 times 1. So h of x with x equal to 1 is 1 and y is 1. So, we get 1 minus 1. Next we can do the same for the second and third training example. Which will give us 2 minus 2 and 3 minus 3. If we calculate the value of the cost function for theta 1 equal to 1, we find a value of 0. Now let's see what the value of our cost function becomes if we choose theta 1 equal to 0.5. Our hypothesis will now look like this. 
Of course the value for m and the values for y superscript 1, superscript 2 and superscript 3 will stay the same as we are still working on the same training set. Only the value of the hypothesis will change and this again illustrates that the cost function is only dependent on theta 1 and theta 0. Only these parameters will vary, they are the dependent variables of j all the other parts will stay the same. We can now calculate what the hypothesis predicts if we give it as input x superscript 1 which is 1. This will give us 1 times 0 0.5 which is just 0 0.5. We can do the same if we give the hypothesis as input x superscript 2 which will result in 2 times 0 0.5 and we can also give the hypothesis as input x superscript 3 which will be 3 times 0 0.5. Now we get a value of 0 0.58, which is different from 0. Before we look into what this means, we first calculate the value of the cost function for one more value of theta1. Now we will set theta1 equal to 1.5. And if we follow the same principle as the last two examples, we will also get a value of 0 0.58. We can now look what it means to minimize a cost function. But before we do so, please consider subscribing as this will really motivate me to make better videos and so you never miss a new video. That said, let's now plot these different values we just calculated in a graph. We can plot the values of j in function of theta1. For the first hypothesis, which is indicated with the blue line and which had theta1 equal to 1, we got a value of 0. For the second hypothesis, indicated with a yellow line and a theta1 of 0.5, we got a value of 0 0.58 and lastly for the third hypothesis, indicated by the red line and a theta 1 of 1.5, we also got a value of 0 0.58. So, as you can see, for every different value of theta 1, we get a different hypothesis and thus a different line through the data. In fact, if we would calculate all the possible values for theta 1, we get a continuous function of theta 1. This continuous function is called the cost function and it can tell us which value for the parameters, which in this case is just theta 1, because remember, we simplified the hypothesis by putting theta 0 to 0. It can tell us which parameter values will give us the hypothesis that fits best through the data. All we have to do is to minimize this cost function or in other words, find the minima of this function. For this example, it is quite clear that 1 is the optimal value for theta 1 as it will give a cost of 0. Or in other words, the predicted value by the hypothesis is the same as the correct answers in the training set. Or in other words, h will be equal to y for all training examples and thus there is no error between the predicted value and the real value in the training set. Note that this does not mean there will be no error between the trained model and new data points. However you don't need to worry about this now, we will see this in a later video. I would like to point out the difference between the hypothesis and the cost function. The hypothesis is our model that we want to train. It will try to predict the outcome of unseen input values. For example what the price of a car will be, given that it has 300 horsepower. It is a function of x and given a certain input x, it will predict a certain output. The cost function on the other hand is a function of the parameters theta0 and theta1. It will learn us what the best values for the parameters of our hypothesis will be. It is a very important function in training our model so that our model will be able to make accurate predictions. Now, in the next part we will see what happens if we don't assume that theta 0 is equal to 0. If you look at this graph, it is quite clear that the hypothesis is not optimal for this training set. In other words, there are still pretty big errors between the real value of the training data and the predictions of the hypothesis. To give accurate predictions, we would like to optimize both parameters. In that case, we would be able to get a line through all data points, meaning that the value of the cost function for these parameters is zero. In this case, it would result in the parameters theta0 and theta1 both equal to 1. This hypothesis will be way more accurate than the one where we only optimize theta1. That said, how does our cost function j look if it is dependent on both parameters? This is illustrated in this 3D figure. Like you see here, the cost j is now plotted in function of both theta1 and theta0. And this might result in a bowl-like figure like you can see over here.
The cost is now depicted by the height of the surface. For example, the value of the cost function at the points theta 0 equal to minus 5 and theta 1 equal to minus 5 will result in a cost of around 50. And as we can see this is a very high cost in this figure, we now can conclude it is a pretty bad hypothesis for our dataset. As you can see the minimum of our cost function will lay somewhere around the point theta 0 and theta 1 equal to 0. However, we can illustrate this 3D cost function into a 2D figure, also known as a contour plot. This will make it easier to illustrate how we can minimize this cost function. If you don't know contour plots, it looks like this. It is used to represent the 3D figure in 2D by making use of contours of different colors. These different contours represent in this case the height of the cost function. All points on the same ellipse will have the same value for J so this point will have the same value for J as this point. Now we also can also see the minimum of the cost function more clear. We can now read our minimum as the center point of the lowest ellipse which gives 0 0 in this case. If we now look back at our previous training set, where we had these data points. We can look at an example of an hypothesis. If we look at this hypothesis where theta 0 is equal to 2.07 and theta 1 is equal to 0 0.5. We can search for this point on our contour plot. If we search for both values of theta, we find this point. It is clear that this is not the optimal hypothesis. There are still a lot more combinations of theta 0 and theta 1 that give a better hypothesis. In fact all the combinations between this ellipse will give a better hypothesis as the value of j will be smaller. Previously we saw that the optimal values for theta 1 and theta 0, were both 1 and indeed if we look at the contour plot. This is true. And if we indeed set the parameters of theta 0 and theta 1 equal to 1, we get the following hypothesis. This is an optimal hypothesis. However, we don't want to visually look for the optimal parameters. This wouldn't even be feasible anymore as we will see in the following videos that the amount of parameters can become really large. We will later see problems with more than 20 parameters, thus also getting theta 2, theta 3 and so on. This will not be possible to plot anymore. So how can we analytically find the best values for theta? Well, we want an efficient algorithm that can calculate the best values for the parameters for us. This can be done with gradient descent it this will be what next video is all about.